In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from the Pure Maths Paper 3, specifically Paper 3.2 from Cambridge A-Level exams from 2023. I'll be doing all this on the board. Hopefully, it'll be a lot like you're used to your teacher doing in a classroom. If you want other questions from this paper, you should be able to find it in a playlist in the description below. And if you find any of my videos uh, useful, I'd greatly appreciate liking, subscribing, or even sharing it to a friend sitting the exams this year or next. In question seven, we're given this fairly complex uh, equation here, and we're basically asked to differentiate it, or to find dy dx more importantly. They tell us, they phrase the question as this. They say, show that dy dx is equal to this. Now, whenever you see that in an exam, show that this equals this. Basically, what they're asking you is find dy dx. They want us to find dy dx, but they're giving us the answer just so we can check our answer. Also, in part B, if, if we fail to do part A, we can still do part B because this is what we're going to need. And it's a nice little clue for part B as well, that we're going to use this. Okay, so how do you do this? How do you find dy dx? Uh, usually we have y equals like some x's and we differentiate. The left side becomes dy dx, the right side is the answer. Can't do that here. Um, the trick is to know what dy dx is. It's d dx is the derivative of y. So we're differentiating, sorry, let me re-say that. Uh, d dx means the derivative, and it means we're differentiating y. So what we can do instead is we can differentiate d dx, the whole left side, 3x squared plus 4xy, sorry, xy plus 3y squared, and that will equal the derivative of the whole right side. So we can differentiate both sides. So let's just do that. The differentiate in the right is easy, it's zero. Um, but differentiate in the left, that's the tricky part. That's where we're getting, what, four marks for this. So this is equal to the derivative of 3x squared, that's an easy one. Two times three is six, times x. Now we have to differentiate this guy. Um, little trick here, but really it's just the product rule. It's just two things being multiplied. Uh, four x and y. So we look up the product rule, it says to differentiate one of them and leave the other alone, and differentiate the other one and leave the first one alone. That's, that's how I remember it, but it's written down. Uh, you can go ahead and just use it. Um, so let's differentiate the first one, we get four, and let's leave the other one alone, we get y, then plus, the product rule is a plus, then uh, we leave the first one alone, four x, and we differentiate the second one. So remember what differentiating is. It's d dx, whatever's in it, and y. And that's what we're looking for, and it's good it's here. Because now we can just rearrange the equation and find out what it's equal to. Um, and the last one here is 3y squared. Now, um, you could just use the product rule again. Just write it as uh, y times y, or, or even y times y, and, and ignore the tree, do the tree layer. You'll get the same answer as I'm about to get, uh, but let's uh, let's do it the product rule way. So the pro uh, sorry, not the product rule, the, the chain rule. So the chain rule, basically how I think of it is, I think of it as let's just pretend what's in here is x, or well, better way is the substitute. Instead of differentiating with respect to x, we're differentiating with respect to y. Yeah, forget what I said. It's probably dumbs it down too much certainly wrong. <laughs> Let's differentiate with respect to y. So just like we differentiate here with respect to x, it was nice and easy. Let's just pretend this is easy. That's what I really meant to say. Let's pretend this is easy. And it's just, uh, let's see, plus two times three, six y. Just pretend it's easy, basically cheat. But now we have to fix that mistake. We're not, it's not easy, is it? It's not x in here, it's y in here. So we have to fix that mistake, and the chain rule does that, by just then differentiating what's in here. So uh, pick, yeah, we differentiate with respect to the new thing, and then we differentiate that. So we get dy dx. I hope, I hope that was clear. I'm not sure if I explained that well. Um, but you know what, go look up the chain rule. It's, um, 
yeah, I can't explain every part, I suppose, here. I was just thinking, well, I put it out here with uh, um, the YDX, the UDX, things like that. But no, it's just the chain rule, look it up. Uh, and you will hopefully get to this conclusion. And that equals the right-hand side, uh, the derivative of a five, which is just zero. Now, we can just start rearranging this. Let's uh, take everything that has no dy dx. Let's leave the two dy dx's on the left, bring these guys over. And then uh, let's take dy dx out of these two. So let's see. On the right-hand side, we'll have minus 6x minus 4y. On the right-hand side, we'll have a dy dx goes into both of them. dy dx goes into a 4x plus a 6y. Oh, sorry, 6y. And let's uh, divide across, but divide this bracket across. So we can end up with uh, dy dx is equal minus 6x minus 4y divided by 4x plus 6y. And hopefully that's the answer. It's, it's not. It's not quite the answer. We have just one little bit of work to do. We can clean this up a bit. Let's see. Uh, the top row, minus 2 goes into everything. And that goes in 3x times plus uh, 2y times. That is what we're looking for. The bottom row, 2 goes into everything. Goes in 2x times plus 3y times. That is what we're looking for. There's a minus, there's a minus. The 2's just cancelled. So that's it. That's how we, um, uh, we show that dy dx is equal to that. Okay, I hope I, I hope I didn't confuse too many people with this middle bit. It's just the chain rule. It's look up the chain rule. It's it's nothing special here. I'm, I think I over I tried to over explain or I did a bit of weird way. Okay, let me clean some of this off and we'll do part B. Okay, as I said earlier, um, to do part B, we have already have everything we need. So we didn't need to be able to do part A. Hopefully you were able to, but we can still go ahead and do part B because everything we needed was here from the beginning plus what they've, uh, what they've told us there. They tell us, uh, hence, so basically use part A, use this, find the exact coordinates of the two points on the curve. This is a curve, it's a, comple a fairly complex looking curve, but it's a curve at which the tangent is parallel to um, y plus two x equals zero. Okay, let me draw this roughly. I've no idea what this looks like. Um, the great thing about functions like this, they can they can look like crazy. They can go back on themselves. Um, although actually, uh, this will look a little like a circle because we have x squared and y squared. And I think, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that makes it look like a like some sort of oval like this. Um, so forget my first scribbles. I think it looks something like an oval, but uh, don't hold me that. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Um, the really the more important one is what they gave us here. Let's have a look at this. Let's rewrite that as y is equal minus two x. They said the tangent we're looking for, the points which have tangents that we're looking for are parallel to this. So we need to know the slope of this guy, which means we need to know the slope of this guy, which is uh, goes through zero here and it's uh, down minus two. We need. Um, we need tangents that are parallel to this line. So on, on this oval I drew would be here and here. Or maybe my first drawing is correct. It would be tangent here and up here. It, it doesn't matter what it looks like. We're not going to use the drawing and uh, I'm not going to spend. I often say draw a, draw a picture if you can. If you can, can do it in 30 seconds. I, I, I can't do that in 30 seconds. And I think it might look like that, but I'm not sure. Okay, so forget the drawing. That was just, um, just trying to explain a couple of things. What they told us now is we're looking for something parallel to this. This has a slope of minus two. A slope, that means it has a derivative or dy dx is equal to minus two at the points we're looking for. Where we're looking for dy dx is minus two. The slope is minus two. It's parallel to this line. And we know what dy dx is. Here it is up here, dy dx is equal to minus 3x plus 2y over 2x plus 3y, and now we know that's equal to minus two. 
And if you look carefully, this and this is two equations, and that has two unknowns, x and y, x and y. It's a, it's a simultaneous equation. It's a complex one, it's a hard one, but it's one we can solve. And they're looking for two points, uh, two coordinates. So that means they're looking for two x's and two y's. So let's, let's just go ahead and try and solve this. This one, let's try and clean this one up here. We'll get, uh, let's do it over here. Minus uh, 3x plus 2y is equal, let's multiply this up and across, is equal minus 4x minus 6y uh, let's get the x's as a positive, move this over, we get uh, minus 3x plus 4, it's just x. And let's uh, move this over, I don't think that matches to my notes, so let me uh, just double check what I've got here. Um, I think I've missed the sign, ah here we go, bracket here. Yeah, yeah, this minus was outside everything, so let me just put a bracket in, and um, this should be a minus 2y. So we get minus 6y plus minus 2, we get minus 4y, and that's, yeah, that's what my notes have. Right, that's a nice uh, clean version of this equation. x equals, that's how we solve sim most simultaneous equations. Find x equals, find y equals, and put it into the other one. So here's this equation, let's just put this in. 3, instead of x, we got minus 4y, and we squared it. 4 instead of x, we put minus 4y, and we multiply by y, uh, plus 3y squared equals 5. Uh, let's clean all this up, we get plus 16y squared, uh, 3 16s are 30 plus 18, 48y squared, uh, minus 16y uh, squared, 2y's there, plus 3y squared equals 5. Uh, what have we got here? We got 32 plus 3, 35. 35y squared equals 5. Um, I think we have room for all of this. Uh, let's see, y squared equals uh, 5 divided by 35, 1 over 7. y is equal plus or minus 1 over the square root of 7. Then we just need to find x, or the x is. x is equal minus 4 times, well, plus or minus, uh, let's, sorry, plus or minus 1 over square root of 7, which equals, um, to be perfectly correct here, you probably want to put minus plus 4 over square root of 7. If, if I left this as my final answer, I think I would get full marks, uh, but if I left this as my final answer. You wouldn't lose a mark, you just, you're not finished yet. They ask you for coordinates, they ask you for x and y. So I think maybe they'd give me full marks for that, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to guarantee that. What they really want at the end is x and y paired together. So when x equals, let's say, minus four over square root of seven, y is equal plus one over square root of seven. And then the next answer is, when x is equal four over square root of seven, y is equal minus one over square root of seven. Hopefully you see why uh, you couldn't just leave plus minus here. Um, you've got all four of the answers. If these are all four answers, you've got them all there. But they didn't ask for just the four components thrown around. They asked for the coordinates. Um, so you need to tell them x is this and y is this together. And again, like I said, I'm not sure they would give me full marks for minus plus, but uh, maybe I would probably argue, oh look, I'm showing you when x is minus, y is plus. <laughs> and, but still, don't take that risk. Just, they ask for coordinates, put them together like this. Just easier. Okay, that was it. This, uh, this was it for part B, which that's five marks. That was a lot of marks for that. Uh, I guess that there was a couple of tricks. You had to, you had to realize they were giving you minus two. This equation didn't look like minus two. You had to re rearrange it and realize you were getting minus two. You had to realize minus two was equal to the dy dx. Then you had to be able to solve this hardish simultaneous equation. Now, if you did this, the second part first, and did it correctly, it didn't turn out too hard. Um, but still. Okay, uh, thank you for watching. If you have any follow-up questions or want to point out any mistakes or anything like that, 
uh, put them in the comments below. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching and have a great day.